You wonder how I got this beard. I, I just grew it. Today on the Better Movie Guy, Better Movie Guy is looking at The Dark Knight. Oh yeah, I love this movie. Let's talk about it. Brought to you by the Better Movie Guy. Hi, I'm the Better Movie Guy, and today I'm talking about The Dark Knight. The Dark Knight is a 2008 film directed by Christopher Nolan, who's my favorite director ever, starring a bunch of people that we'll get to in a minute. Now, my daughter asked me to review the complete Dark Knight trilogy. Marjade, this is for you. Here we go. All right, the plot of The Dark Knight, if you don't know, it's been a year since Batman's been around, basically, and criminals are running scared and there's this guy who comes out called the Joker who starts messing with everything and basically he makes Batman question himself in a lot of ways because he's not a normal criminal. He doesn't want just regular money. He wants to watch the world burn, as Alfred says. He doesn't do it for the cash. He does it for the fun. And so the story is all about Batman and Commissioner Gordon and Harvey Dent, the new DA, and they're trying to put away all the mob and the Joker comes around and just messes everything up. The love interest of the first movie, Rachel, is still back, and she's also with the DA, and still kind of loves Bruce, but, you know, it's messed up. And all the regulars from the first one were there, too. And that's all I'm going to say about the plot. So the Dark Knight is the movie that I basically think has defined comic book movies. It is so well made. It is so awesome. It is so well acted. It is so, 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 so many things that I don't want to even continue trying to say them. It's just amazing. The plot is insane and I don't get this. People keep on saying it's a rip off of Heat. I've seen Heat. No it's not. It's a crime movie just like Heat's a crime movie. There were lots of other movies like Heat before Heat existed. If you didn't know that. Yeah. Crime movies have been around for a very long time. We're gonna start with the directing. Christopher Nolan is my favorite director. He films on film which is a weird concept but he does it and he sets up some amazing shots. The beginning is this whole opening crime thing with Joker with a bank. It's just insanely awesome to heist. The shots he sets up and the, the setups he does with film and live action and with props. One of the things I love about Christopher Nolan is the fact that he is a big believer in practical effects. Now, if you don't know, a practical effect is something that is there on the set. So in the first movie, in Batman Begins, there was the tumbler. The tumbler was not CGI. The tumbler was a real prop. It was a car. It could do basically all the things it was supposed to do. It, could, it like shot it off a cannon at one point to get it to jump higher, but still, it, they shot the car off a cannon. It's They didn't like CGI it off the cannon. They did the freaking car off a cannon. Car cannon. Need to pick one of those up for my minivan. So in this, there's this thing called the bat pod which is a practical effect. It's this incredibly impossible motorcycle, which is possible only because the guy riding it is the best motorcycle rider in the world, but it works and it's real and it's just insane. All the things that are in this movie that basically could be real and didn't have to be CGI, like there's a truck that flips over, 90% of directors would be like, yeah, we'll CGI that. No, they flipped over a real semi-truck. End over end, if you haven't seen the movie, it's like just, it, it's insane. He loves practical effects. So much so that I, I heard a quote from the Dark Knight Rises guy who does the special effects that says he actually has seen more special effects done to a romantic comedy than he did for the Dark Knight Rises. That means that almost all the effects you see in these films are basically there. I love that. It makes for realism. It makes for something that's not just like tennis balls. Yeah, I just love Nolan. Now, mixed with that incredible score, him and Hans Zimmer just have this relationship where they know how to work with each other and they both kind of understand they're made perfectly together for this. The score is great. Now let's get to the acting. Christian Bale is phenomenal as Batman. And I know people have this thing with the voice, the, the hockey pads, blah, 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 blah. I don't care. I love the voice because it makes sense. You'd want a scary voice. You'd want a voice that's very different from your own voice. I get it. If you don't like it, I get it too, but I just, I like it and it works fine. As Bruce Wayne and Batman, which is the real crux of this, he has the hardest job in the film. And you may be like, the Joker has, no, the Joker does not have the hardest job in the film. The Joker's got the best performance in the film, I'll give you that. But he doesn't have the hardest job because playing Batman is a lot harder than playing the Joker because the Joker's a fun character. The Joker you can do a lot of things with, but the straight man is so harder to play. Playing Batman and Bruce Wayne, in particular Bruce Wayne, because Bruce Wayne isn't all that interesting on his front. He's the mask that, that Batman wears out in public. And Christian Bale does a great job being that mask. He does both roles perfectly because they're one role, but they're two roles. And really, it's just, he does it so well. Now let's get to the Joker. Heath Ledger is so amazing in this role. And I'm, I'm sorry if it messed him up and contributed to his death in any way. I don't know if it did. There's speculation, but he went deep into the Joker and 
pulled out one of the best performances in history. And not the history of comic book movies, the history of film. Yeah. Now, sadly, I think if he would have lived, he wouldn't have got nominated, or at least wouldn't have won his Oscar that he got because he was passed away, because they wouldn't have given it to a comic book villain. But I honestly think he has one of the best performances in the history of cinema. He's incredible. The depth and talent the man put into that one performance, how hard he went at it. There's a scene with him and Harvey Dent in the hospital, and he literally walked around the hospital room for an hour before they filmed, not talking to Aaron Eckhart. Didn't talk to him, just walked around the room muttering to himself as the Joker before they get the rule, and then they're like, action. And then he came over and was the Joker. And Aaron Eckhart, like when they called cut, Aaron Eckhart's like, holy crap, that was incredible. Like he literally was just like, he did that for an hour in character as the Joker before he talked to me. We didn't even talk. He's like, we didn't even talk about what we were gonna do. He just came over as the Joker. That's commitment, people. Speaking of, Aaron Eckhart. Okay, I'm, Harvey Dent is black in the comic. This is one of those things that I don't like to make a big deal about because I have no problem that the new Johnny Storm in the Fantastic Four movies is gonna be black. Doesn't bother me. So I have no problem that he was white. You get the best actor for the role, works for what it is. Aaron Eckhart did a great job. Of course, he, did, like, he had a hard role to play because he had to play like third fiddle. There's Joker, and then there's Batman, and then there's him. And it's like, doing that is not easy. And he did a fantastic job as playing the White Knight and then being the crazy guy with two faces. And then quickly, we'll just, the rest of the cast. You got Gary Oldman, phenomenal. Maggie Gyllenhaal, thank God, got the role for, of Rachel Dawes. Katie Holmes didn't want to do it because she was doing a movie called Mad Money. <laughs> thank you, Katie. You're the weakest part of Batman Begins and you left this one and gave it to a better actress. Good job. Michael Caine, oh, he is so good as Alfred. Who knew that some of his best work would be later in life? Because, like, he's great when he's younger, but, man, is he so dialed in as Alfred, especially with the whole speech of some men just want to watch the world burn. You got Morgan Freeman. Who's Morgan Freeman? And he's awesome. And even Eric Roberts is terrific in this movie. Eric Roberts sometimes is great and sometimes sucks. He is terrific as the mob boss. The action is great. The setups look amazing. What can you say about this movie that hasn't been said by everyone else? Not much. It is fantastic. It is one of the best movies ever made, and it's flat out the best comic book movie ever made. This is the most amazing superhero film you're ever gonna see. Goes without saying, five beards out of five. This is a fully bearded movie. Christian Nolan, thank you. Christian Bale, thank you. Heath Ledger, thank you. There are no more words to express how much I love this movie. So I'm just gonna stop talking. Thanks for watching. Stay bearded, everyone. You're watching a bearded movie, guy. I'm not. I'm not saying more. Okay, I'll say YouTube safely. And as always, YouTube safely. You know what? I say one last thing. The only problem with this movie is, like midway through, I love it so much, I want to restart it and watch it again when it's finished. That's a problem, people. YouTube safely.